in 2022, the Canyon Spectral On saw quite the update, getting longer, slacker and lower, as well as getting a new most configuration. So Canyon built this bike with the aim of being lighter as well as offering a longer range. But all in all, it's a bike that absolutely excels on the descents, but there are a couple of niggles elsewhere, so you'll have to stay tuned to see what's going on there. So this is the full review of the Canyon Spectral On CF8. Okay, so that new update included a whole bunch of features, and as I've said before, there is now a full carbon frame. What's important about this is that it drops some of the kilos, but it also adds a bunch of stiffness to that rear end thanks to a new seat stay bridge. On top of all of that new stuff, there are also 15mm through axles for the seat stay and the main pivots that also are home to larger bearings, so that should uh, uh, give more stiffness, but it should also make those bearings more durable. And with those updates, Canyon has changed the geometry around a little bit to make it a bit more modern. Though the brand will admit that it's not terribly progressive by today's standards, but on paper it looks absolutely fine. So this large frame comes with a 485mm reach, there's a 65.5 degree head tube angle and there's a 76.5 degree seat tube angle. Along with that there's then a 440mm chainstay. Those aren't the only changes as Canyon has dropped the seat tube length by 20mm on every frame size. So that means that uh, shorter riders can fit on longer frames and larger riders can fit longer dropping posts. So while those updates are pretty cool, I think the coolest thing about this bike is that the whole motor configuration has been changed a little bit. So as you can probably see, it's the front end of the motor itself has been tilted up a little bit. So what this does is allow for a bit more space for Canyon to drop the 720 watt hour battery down in the frame. What this does is creates a lower center of gravity, which should mean easier cornering and better stability. And as we're on the subject of the motor, this bike runs on a Shimano EP8. And again, there's a 720 watt hour battery, but that can be upgraded to a 900 watt hour battery if you want a bit of extra range at the expense of some weight. Then battery access is actually really simple and kind of like a marvel of German engineering. So at the bottom here, there's just like a rubber lever catch thing. Pull that off and then that whole bottom bracket cap comes away. Then there are two bolts, undo those and the whole battery slides out. What I really like about it is that on the underside of this cap, there are copper magnets where you can hold those two Allen bolts so you'll never lose them. It's small but clever, like well done Canyon. Okay, so moving on and let's have a chat about the spec of this bike. And it's rather good for the money. So at the front, we've got a Fox 36 Rhythm handling 150 mm suspension. At the back, there's a Fox DPS Evol Performance and that has, or that damps 155 mm suspension. But we're told by Canyon that if you want to run 160mm at the front, it's more than happy to do so. So the drivetrain, Canyon has been clever with what's gone on here. So it's a mishmash of Shimano parts in order to offer great performance, but at a reasonably low price. So we've got an SLX shifter and that's made to the Shimano XT derailleur. Then there is a Shimano Dior cassette. The Shimano theme continues towards the brakes where we've got a pair of Shimano SLX four pot brakes and they come with 203 mil rotors at either end. So there should be plenty of stopping power. So those brakes are slowing down a pair of Sunringle Durock wheels. So at the front, we've got the SD37. At the rear, we've got the SD43. And they are home to Maxxis rubber. So at the front here, we have the Maxxis Asagai. Um, that comes with an XO casing at 2.5 inch in width. At the rear, there's the famed DHR2. That gets a 2.6 inch width and a Burley XO Plus casing, which for an e-bike like this is ideal. Everything else comes from Canyon's own range. So we've got the Iridium dropper post. We've got the G5 on bar, and that's a specific e-bike bar. So um, all the EP8 gubbins goes inside. It's rather sleek. Um, again, that's a G5 stem too. As for the saddle, that comes from Physique, and to be honest, I didn't get on with it. Um, I found it very hard, and to be honest, it cut some of my ride short because it, I just didn't get on with it. But let's get on to this bike's ride characteristic, and as I said in the intro, it is a ripper on the descents, but it is rather good elsewhere, but again, there are some niggles, when it, especially when it comes to climbing. So generally, that bike offers a nice and relaxed position over the pedals, so the head tube is rather tall at 135mm, but it keeps your back nice and straight when you're in saddle position, which if you suffer from back pain over longer rides, or if you just have some kind of injury, you know, it's a nice and comfortable position. But it's not all golden because it shifts weight rather rearwards, which does benefit when it comes to rear end grip, because 
there's just more weight over the rear wheel. But because that weight is so rearward, you are combating front wheel lift when the climbs get particularly steep. And that 440 mil chainstay doesn't really help things there. So it makes the front end rather light and you'll have to consciously weight it if you're going up something a bit steeper, which if you're looking for a bike that you just wanna rip up a climb and rip back down, you know, you, it's just something that needs taken care of. But again, rear end traction, there's nothing to complain about. And while the geometry does a good job of placing all that weight to the rear, what really helps is the suspension kinematic on this bike. So Canyon doesn't sell this bike as having the famed triple face suspension kinematic that we saw on the analog spectral, but it kind of follows a similar design. So it's nice and supple off the top, which is excellent when you're climbing, because it means, yeah, you've got tons of grip. The rear wheel tracks the ground really nicely. But as you push through that suspension past the sag point, you meet a ton of support and there's a good level of bottom out resistance. But that stuff we'll get onto in a bit. But when you show this bike something steeper, as in like downhill gradient, um, that tall front end really comes into its own because it offers up a ton of support. I've been able to go down steep descents that I would usually be a little bit nervous about because again, weight is already rather rearwards and it's a great descending position and you don't have to worry about weighting the front as hard because of course the body position is kind of doing that already. Pair that with a well set up fork and yes, you've got a fantastically supportive front end that's ideal for steep sections. But for mellower trails, it's still rather sorted. So as I said before, Canyon says that the geometry isn't particularly progressive, but I think it's right on the money for technical descending, especially when you're going fast in the straight line. So the 408 mil reach and that reasonably slack head angle is just super stable. But it's no slouch in the corners either, and that's thanks to two things. So first off, there's that mullet wheel setup that I didn't mention before. Um, so that's the little rear wheel at the rear, so um, that's a 650B one, and this is a 29 inch at the front. We're seeing that on a lot of e-bikes at the moment, and this is a prime example as to why. So that rear wheel claws back some agility from that rather lengthy geometry, and it makes it just super easy to corner. So it kind of like slinks into its lean and it keeps it mega stable. And when paired with that bottom bracket, the stability is boosted even further. But what really makes an improvement to this bike's character when it's cornering is that motor layout. Um, so as I said before, it lowers weight further down into the frame. So when you are tipping the bike into the corner, you're not wrestling the bike as hard as you would with a more traditional layout. To be honest, it feels a bit more like an analog bike, um, just because there is that little weight at the top, but then it blends its e-bike weight into like a chunk taming characteristic because that weight is still definitely there. But this bike as a whole isn't terribly heavy. Um, so it's, we're talking 23.23 kilos, which is pretty good for like a trail e-bike like this. So with those two features that makes this bike so capable when cornering, it results in a package that's actually an awful lot of fun, regardless of the trail you're riding. And again, if we touch back on that suspension kinematic, if you go through a berm, you push through to that side point, it's super support, it just pings you out with a bunch of speed. You know, it, Canyon's done a great job in designing this bike. So Canyon has recently dropped all of its prices and this bike will now set you back 5,250 pounds, which isn't too bad at all. Though, if we compare that to um, Canyon's closest German competitor, YT Industries and the Decoy Core 2, there is some competition to be had. So that YT decoy, that will cost you 5,000 pounds and it gets a RockShox Yari fork, which is of a similar level to this one, um, but it gets a Shimano Dior group set all in. And for the price difference, that is understandable. But the big difference is, is that the YT decoy gets a smaller battery as standard. So that's a 540 watt hour battery. And for an extra 900 pounds, you can then upgrade to a 720 watt hour battery, which again, still isn't quite the possibilities that you can get with this bike. But again, another difference is that its geometry is very different. That makes it a very different bike all in all. So that YT decoy gets a 463 mil reach, which is considerably shorter than this bike, even though the rest of the numbers are fairly similar. So if you're looking to do very aggressive riding, that's something you would want to consider because it may not be as supportive on the steeps. We can't ignore the fact that this is a direct to consumer bike. So generally it's going to be cheaper than the likes of Specialized and Trek. Um, but if we do compare to Specialized, there's the um, Turbo Levo Comp Alloy. That's 5,500 pounds. And of course that gets a full alloy frame. So it'd be heavier than this bike, but it gets a RockShox 35 silver fork, which is much less sophisticated than this rhythm here. 
Um, again, clearly the value just isn't quite competitive from Specialized. It's a similar story with Trek as well as they offer a lower level Trek rail. Um, it gets similar kit to the Specialized, but it'll take about 5,000 450 pounds. So we can conclude that while 5,250 pounds is quite a lot of money to spend on basically anything, um, the value of this bike is rather good for the money. So that is the full review of the Canyon Spectral on CF8. And if you have one of these bikes, let us know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find more reviews just like this. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.